what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hey everyone, welcome back to the South India series. Today's episode is the very start of our journey and we had a jam-packed itinerary. So we started early in Bangalore, but I guess not early enough. We got stuck in the morning traffic for quite a while. <laughs> So we stopped in a toy shop in Channapatna, which is a town midway Bangalore, Mysore. The history of toy making in Channapatna dates back to the 1700s, and the store, it was full of vibrant colours and intricate designs. They're all environmentally friendly as well, handmade from milkwood and coloured using vegetable dyes. And also, we went by some hills, so it's Ramnagar Hills and or I guess Ramnagar Mountains and there's a really famous uh, Bollywood movie with Amitabh Bachchan called Shole, <laughs> Shole which I saw <laughs> you whispered it <laughs> he's like, okay, 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 he's okay, like it's rolling, yeah, it's rolling 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 <laughs> okay. so we went by the so we went by a really big mountain called Ramnagar Mountains and it's featured in a really well known Bollywood movie called Shole with Amitabh Bachchan I remember watching it when I was younger and actually the mountains look a lot bigger in real life. I've seen guys on motorbikes wearing lungis, I don't know how it's possible <laughs> because I've never been able to get on a bike in a skirt or a dress but I mean they've got skills, I've got to give it to them. So I'm excited to reach Mysore and um, see Mysore Palace hopefully, eat some dosa, let's see, I'm kind of hungry. So why is Mysore a heritage city? Well, the boys told me it's known as the cultural capital of the state of Karnataka because of its contributions and major artworks. Rohan and Rohit were feeling really nostalgic to be back here because they went to boarding school here. Now this is what I came for, the stunning Mysore Palace. So the locals speak of a 400 year curse on the royal family of Mysore, but apparently 400 years ago, a queen was dethroned from the kingdom and just before she committed suicide into the Kauvery River, she uttered a curse that the royal family, the Badia family, will be cursed with no children for eternity. Cursed or not, the palace is absolutely breathtaking. I mean, just look at it. So we got back on route, we hadn't figured out our accommodation yet in Madikeri, so we really wanted to just reach there in good time. But I was so intrigued with what I saw as we were passing through Baila Kupe, we just had to make a slight diversion to explore. So around 70,000 Tibetans live here. In the 60s, the government allotted them land for the first ever Tibetan exile settlement. What first caught my eye as we drove through the area was the colourful prayer flags like these ones, hanging high throughout the town. We reached the Golden Temple, which is the residing place for the thousands of Tibetans, as you can see. It's gorgeous! Ah! Okay, I'll explain. This monastery is home to over 5,000 lamas, both monks and nuns. I really could have spent all day here just exploring the gorgeous structures. We made it just in time to observe the afternoon prayer. So we got back on the road. Baila Kupe to Marikeri is only one hour but as we entered the area, we lost network on our phone, so we couldn't use Google Maps. But with some help from the friendly locals, we found our hotel in the end. So we just arrived in Madakeli. It's pouring with rain, it's actually really windy. Uh, but we found like, a really nice lodge hotel. And just by chance, there are vacancies. Let's go see the room. I'm looking forward to spending the night here. I hope it's not haunted though. 
Who is that? No, you're not. Yeah, get the towel and say. It's the child. It's our responsibility. We did plan to get an early night, but to be honest, we were buzzing to have started the trip, so we just played around with the drone for a while and we did some footage transfers on the laptop before eventually settling down. Is it pouring with rain? That's all good. I'm gonna go for breakfast. Hopefully I'm gonna have a dorsa. We just need to load up the car first. Like I said, the trip was pretty spontaneous. So I just packed some jeans, trainers, some waterproofs, because we were traveling during the monsoon, and a whole load of long Indian blouses known as kurtis. I do it bad so that he'll do it properly because I can't be bothered. So this place is definitely wanted. And um, the ceiling has uh, windows at the top, so the whole night I was just looking up and someone's peeping through and watching us. We need to get Aaron in his slow coach and we need to get some food and we need to get on the road because we're going to the NGO. Come. <laughs> Excuse me. That was in time to shield myself from jokes. <laughs> so I'm going to act as I'm not understanding you. What's on Sunday? You were telling me. What do we do for the shot? Sorry? <laughs> what do we do for the shot? We need to get a good shot here because it's a beautiful view. So, long hand. What do we do? Sorry? <laughs> Tell me. I think our food is gone, bro. Okay, we have a drone. <laughs> we have a drone. So, here's the plan of action. I'll I'm attach this to this. I'm not barking, I'm not there. Oh, back with it. Spider Man. Spider Man, and we'll get the drone shot of him no, I don't get out of the room. Nice. Yeah, what what do you think? Chutney. Is this is chutney. This is chutney. Masala dosa. This is samba. Like, we dance and eat samba. Friends dosa. Thank you. That's for me. Friends dosa. It's kind of like pancakes, but it's like a bit thinner, a bit crispier. And you can put anything inside, so I've just gone for a plain one. Normally I would get it cheese, this one has egg in it. It's a lot. Today is technically day one in Cork and it's nice. I mean, it's been raining, but it's cleared up now and we've just arrived at the Swasta Centre. So it's an NGO that works for education for children with special needs and they also provide rehabilitation for children. And I've seen a lot online, their pictures and reviews of people that have visited the centre. So I'm really psyched to go in and see how they operate. The school's made up of in-house residents and also day scholars who commute daily for their education. Some students have to travel up to 30 kilometers per day, for example. For the teens, there's also an on-site vacation training center, which has a focus on financial independence. The children here are aged three onwards and they really have a wide range of disabilities from speech and hearing impairments to cerebral palsy to autism to behavioural disorders. Various circumstances have resulted in these children being enrolled at the school, whether that's lack of support in the community for their disabilities or coming from underprivileged backgrounds. And this is like uh, community living for them, you know, where yeah. they all live together. Yeah. So we see uh, the change in the new children very soon because they are accepted and somebody is there to take care of them. Yeah. Somebody is there to teach them. Somebody is monitoring them. They are so varied in their skills. And our thought is that we have to make it look like a normal school. Yeah. So we are trying to venture into research also, research in disability studies. We have already spoken to many universities here. Mm -hmm. 
so maybe by the time next time you come, we'll have a research center. Yeah. How can I say uh, yeah. What's your name? Nim Hesare No. Nim Hesare No. So the foundation was set up in 94 by Tata Coffee to promote the welfare of the local community. Arati Mam gave us a full tour and she explained the special education that they offer for all of their residents and the day scholars at their centre. She told me that some former students have gone on to pursue careers in teaching and now work at the school, like this teacher I met. Lovely. And she got the best uh, state teacher award also. Really? Before last year. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Sure. Nice. So she is a student here. So yeah, when she did has The children can get on-site physiotherapy. This was actually donated by some person, a gentleman from the dance school. We have a physiotherapist, and now she has gone home on maternity. The children are trained in various skills so that they go on to be financially independent, valued members of society. These girls were focused on creating artwork for national distribution. It's really, really pretty. Mam said that the product sales give them a sense of purpose and it's no wonder this stuff is in demand. It's clearly all made with love, focus and dedication. These ladies were printing and tailoring. Nice to meet you. My name is Isha. So you're making napkins. <laughs> the centre has a hundred residents. I was so surprised at how neat and spacious their living quarters were. The centre is just surrounded by nature. Very occupied through the small dance party. The children have speech and hearing impairments, uh, yet they're able to do these dance classes with the teacher through counting movements, and I think they did a really, really good job. Thank you. So we just finished our tour of um, the Swasta home, and Mam was so helpful in showing us how it's run, and I mean, I think we're all blown away with how the house and the school is run with so much compassion and hard work. I mean, the people working here, they're not just here for a job, you know, they're here, um, they really want to help the children. And um, it's actually a shame because um, a lot of kids who um, have like really privileged upbringings, they don't realize how happy you can be just with the simple things. A lot of the children here are just so grateful and so happy. If you look around, they're so happy to be here. Because they have each other. And this school is more of a home to them. And Mam said a lot of the ex-students are constantly coming back because they miss it. So it just goes to show how much love is put into their upbringing here. It's not just another NGO, another organisation. It's, it's a home of love. and. They're doing it. They're doing such a beautiful job of it. I'm really grateful for the insight. Swasta Centre 
and uh, we're feeling really overwhelmed. Mam was so helpful in taking us around <clears throat> and actually it was really interesting to speak to her because although they were established by Tata Coffee, the funding is there which is yes. great. She did say they're lacking in volunteers actually and donation parcels come in very like few and far between. I was speaking to Mam about how I mean, obviously I'm from the UK and for disabled people it's a whole different ball game compared to India to be honest. I mean in terms of if it's ramps or handles or even stigmas attached to disabled people in a workspace. In India I can, I've been, begun to understand is completely different and actually that's something that she was really passionate about changing. These children we just saw are perfectly able to earn a living. Yes, They're so skilled. And I think they're treated also really well. Like they've yeah, been think, given great facilities. Huh. Here I think they feel loved. Like yeah. for example I this guy was problem was tied like a dog. Like yeah, I, who I does that? was choking up when Mam told us that. So yeah. there was one child what was his name? One who kept wanting to see himself, right? Yeah. So Mam told us from the age of zero till six, unfortunately his parents are alcoholics and he was chained and confined to a, a locked room up until the age of six. So by the time we could identify him, he could not speak, he could not walk and he was being tied with a dog. So he would crawl on all his fours, you know. Oh, so after coming here, he started walking. Yeah. Um, so he wasn't, I mean, they had to work a lot on him. Yeah, he was walking around and he was happy and he was like totally posing for the cameras. Yeah, <laughs> and writing and all. And she said he's come a long way. And in such a short space of time, in such a loving environment, if yes. that's possible. I think that's why he is improving, right? Because like yeah. he's... He likes this kind of place, like yeah. open place where you know there are people that you know care for him. Like yeah. he feels like I think like he has a part of I mean like, <coughs> a, like he's part of a family here. Yeah. Like he's getting something that he didn't get back then or what he was denied. She said there's a mobile outreach program which identify priority uh, cases within right. like a society. There's a waiting list for the school, but then there are also the emergency cases. Right. So they right. got him in and they dealt with it. There was wow. counseling and everything. So. It's nice they have those programs in place to identify. And definitely at a place like this, I mean, like it's like a suburb type of a place, and you know, yeah. it's not like at least in an urban place, like your neighbor would probably say, like you know, yeah. I mean, even if you're like a parent and you wouldn't want to, you know, call someone and say, you know, my uh, kid needs a special school, yeah. like probably your neighbor would give a call and say, you know what, I think he needs help. Yeah. But in a place like this, like your neighbors are really distant. Yeah. Like the places are so huge, and you know, people don't really give a damn. Mm -hmm. But then, like to have people who go around and do stuff like this is really amazing. Like Last year they had a lot of foreign volunteers coming in and this year they haven't had any. So I mean it was nice to get that from her because although they are well funded there probably are people maybe watching now who you know they're completely unaware of such an NGO. It's literally in the middle of nowhere like it feels like we're in a forest which is beautiful but for them I mean to get the reach out there and get maybe international volunteers in or even Indian, Indian volunteers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, young like, people, they'd be happy to have young people. Over that's here. what she was saying about youngsters. She was saying about the vision and being innovative. Um, it's really important to get like young people in and uh, keep it fresh. And I think people who come here to volunteer, it'll be a big gain for them as well. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what they're trying to do there, right? Like make them more independent by themselves, yeah. like you know, so that eventually, like when they go out there, like they could be on their own. Like, did you get that? Or... <laughs> 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 Was that a camera? Yeah. Talk. Right. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk, talk. Go on. <laughs> so yeah, I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot what he was going to say. He said, "Fuck you." Know. <laughs> I'm still recording. <laughs> But no, what he was saying was so, okay, we've been to see Unit 1 today. Actually, there is a Unit 2 just for older boys. So it's a rehabilitation program. So it's for the students that have been brought up in this home, in this school. And they're going into the community with their own skills and, I mean, their own careers. Which is nice because it's not only a school. I mean, the, the kids we saw are very young. But if they can have some sort of teething process into the community as fully abled workers, then it's great they're able to do that with their students. Right. They, they have a bright future ahead of them. It's not like they do like ordinary things like they they do like they're like really intense at craft and you know drawing and yeah. all. Like we saw their dance also you know yeah. Yeah. like these guys are like deaf and they could like move for the music like how is that possible right? Yeah. I mean guys like us like <laughs> you know, for the dance, music yeah. like I mean, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> These guys like really move. I think they feel the vibrations or something like that. Anush. 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 Like humans were meant to be like this man share love share happiness what are we doing now sharing wifi passwords <laughs> yeah you want hot spot she's crying <laughs> i'm cool uh, she I cried was, twice today i uh, didn't cry what? she cried for the first time for the most unimportant reason My she God. cried for data pack okay, first I- <laughs> just to clarify, I didn't cry. <coughs> I was just ranting about it. I mean, yep, okay. You I, cried. I, I didn't cry. Okay. But I was upset. Now and she'll now, cry. I'm, I mean, in reflection. Now I'm, she'll cry. I'm double crying for today. I'm good. So but is this going to happen? Moral of the story, I, d- I don't care about data. I'm cool. I mean, Oh, that's good news. Okay, I, have, I, have, I have one question. Isha, you're have... getting the love from all of us. Don't we all love? End of, love. End of this trip, she's got attention go, um, and love from all of us to you. Attention, you just yeah. <laughs> At the end of this trip, do you think you'll throw your phone like after crying five six times? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. You'll cry four five times after four five NGOs. <laughs> no. Then are you going to throw your phone because data pack, phone call doesn't matter? Are you going to change? How how do you think this will change you? The thing is, when I did research on these places, I was inspired by how they're run and like what projects and uh, schemes are in place and programs. But to get the insight like we have just done, it's totally different. And to be there and to ask the questions I want to ask, I think it's important for me because I'm not saying like a lot of people will watch this, I know, but I just feel like whoever would watch this and would see it through my eyes maybe would want to help in some way, however they can, whether it's donations or volunteering or just awareness say this is going on. And for example, just a small example, I reflected on that with complaining about my data earlier. Like, come on, like really, I was complaining about my data. These kids, they're so happy. So, if- oh, Were you jealous? Was it some kind of jealousy? <laughs> How can I you be happy inspired. without data? I was inspired <laughs> by seeing people happy with very little all they have is like. Initially when she entered, she'd be like, excuse me, what SIM card do you use? No, I'll be like, excuse me, is there Wi-Fi here? There's no Wi-Fi. You look there. happy, you look happy, what data do you use? <laughs> what is your pack? Stop, stop, I think we've got good. <laughs> Cut it. Give the letter. Isha, cover, Wait, cover, cover. Wait, the cartwheel. <laughs> drone shots before heading to check in at Road's End Cottages, but the spitting rain just wasn't allowing it. So we stopped for some roadside chai and we started to unwind for the day. This route made me realise that Gorg truly is the Scotland of India. I've spent almost seven years in India and this is the most green I've ever seen here. Our friend Suyog kindly offered us accommodation here at Road's End Luxury Riverside Cottages and I couldn't wait to explore the site. I'll be showing you more of that in our next video. I hope you guys enjoyed following the start of our long journey and if you're interested in helping the Korg Foundation that we featured, please do find the details in the description below. Thanks so much for your support guys. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more uploads.